Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered where would we be without bees? Now, I know people bang on about conserving every last species, but surely we can do without some of the nasty stinging ones. Well, not really. As far as important species go, bees are up there at the top of the list. They are critical pollinators. Of the 100 crop species that feed 90% of humanity, over 70 of them are pollinated by bees. Honeybees are the world's leading pollinators, responsible for $30 billion a year in crops. But that would only be the start of our losses, and to be honest, you can't really put a price on it. If we lose bees, then we may lose all of the plants they pollinate, all of the animals that eat those plants, and ultimately up the food chain to us. It's thought a world without bees just couldn't sustain over 7 billion people. Without bees, our supermarkets would have around half the amount of fruit and vegetables. It could mean a world without such luxuries as carrots, apples, lemons, onions, melons, Brazil nuts and, of course, honey. No lime for my gin and tonic, no coconut for my pina colada and, to be honest, I can barely bring myself to say it. Not even enough grapes for my wine. <laughs> Sadly, it gets worse because we are losing bees at a frightening rate. Honeybees, bumblebees and solitary bees are all in decline, but what's to blame? Well, one strong contender is a loss of flower meadows. Bees need the flower's sugary nectar to drink and the flowers need the bees to reproduce. Here in the UK, it's estimated that we've lost around 97% of our flower-rich grasslands in the last 70 years. And ironically, it's often to make way for crops that depend on the bees. It might explain why a number of bumblebees have gone extinct in the UK in the past few decades. And then there's the Varroa mite, a tiny crab-like creature that lives on the back of honeybees, sucking their blood during the winter months and reproducing in their developing brood in the summer. It's thought to be behind colony collapse, where bees either slowly die out or abandon their hive for pastures new, taking the unwelcome mites with them. One thought is to invest in killer bees, super aggressive and large honeybees that don't seem to mind the Varroa mite. However, as their name suggests, they have a nasty little habit of killing cows and people. A further scourge of the bees is good old favourite global warming. A study in Colorado suggested that the wonky weather might be disrupting the usual synchronisation of opening flowers and bees emerging from hibernation. It found that pollination levels may have dropped by as much as 50% whilst the snoozing bees missed the flowers in bloom. This is particularly tragic because it happens even in pristine areas untouched by humans' disease and pesticides. Sadly, global warming is just that, truly global. And if these weren't enough, the final nail in the coffin may be pesticides. One particular class, called neonicotinoids, or neonics for short, seems to be a major culprit. In the lab, tiny amounts of neonics cause honeybees to struggle to learn where their food sources are, how to find their way home again, and even promoted viral replication inside them. It seems to be having a huge impact in recent years. Since 2006, US beekeepers have lost around 30% of their hides during the winter each year, much higher than the usual 5-10%. to in certain provinces of southwest China, heavy pesticide use and loss of habitat has effectively eradicated wild bees. The situation has got so bad that farmers are having to pollinate orchards by hand, going round with a paintbrush and a little pot of pollen. One honey-coated lining is that this isn't the first time it happened and clearly the world didn't stop spinning. In 2013, scientists discovered that around 65 million years ago, there seemed to be a mass extinction of bees comparable to the current crisis of declines that we're seeing. However, they did get wiped out at the same time as the dinosaurs and flowering plants, and those extinctions had a flipping asteroid to blame. Happily, evolution always finds a way, and researchers have recently found that more sex might be the answer. Very promiscuous queen bees have much more genetically diverse offspring than their monogamous peers. 
Their progeny can support a greater diversity of gut bacteria, which produces healthier, hardier colonies. So yes, bees are in trouble and really need our help, but there is a glimmer of hope that this question isn't one we'll have to answer in the near future. For more great films about science and nature, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon on Earth Unplugged. The horned lizard is too slow to outrun a snake, so it makes itself appear larger and taller. Surely too much of a mouthful for the snake. But it has another trick. It plays dead.